All right, I have the French Bricard Chiffrel S2. This lock has 15 pins. It has 19 pin chambers, but I don't know if the bottom four can be populated or not. So maybe this is fully pinned. Um, it has five coming from the left, five coming from the right, and five coming from the top. And the back two on the left and right are these interactive pins that play off each other. So it's interactive in that um, this element on the key moves and it can push a pin beyond the plane of the key, so higher than a key normally be able to push. And so those two pins play off each other, but when you're picking, they don't. <laughs> so um, I don't know, it's kind of a silly little feature. I'll use this wiper insert on the bottom. This thing pops off a decent amount. I noticed that if you try to go clockwise, the keyway is shaped such that it digs underneath um, and that's going to really bind up against the, the housing there, or against the, the core of the lock. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but if you go like that, it, it, it goes under the, the lock. You see how that little bit of warding sticking out? If you go here, it goes under. So around this side, I noticed that you can just barely hold on like that, and that'll work. So let's give that a try. Uh, I did take it apart because it was kind of gunky and I cleaned it up, and lubricated it, and um, there are these four chambers on the bottom I'd mentioned, two driver and two key pin kind of arrangement, but they're set so they don't touch the key. They're like zero lift, don't touch the key at all, and you can't lift them at all because um, the, the chamber is fully filled. So to pick it, I'm going to use this uh, multi-pick Elite G Pro number one, is this curved flag, and then the its counterpart, the number nine. So they're curved in opposite directions. So I'll use this curved one to push the pins on the right with the, the, the outer side of the curve. And I'm gonna be just looking for um, binding pins here. So not not too concerned about which pin I'm on, but there's pin one is, is um, springy. Pin two feels like it's binding. I'm not getting any movement, so I'm gonna get a little click out of that. Pin three is springy. Pin four is not moving so I'll push on that a little click out of that but yep and pin 5 is the interactive there come back to the beginning this pin 1 is still springy pin 2 might have got a little click from that and then it's springy so um, these pins they some of them the drivers have like a, a, a T pin so they need to be picked twice um, and they act a little, some of them act a little tapered, so you gotta go back and forth and, uh, see, pin threes, click again, pin four, little click again, little bit of plug rotation off of that, three again, more plug rotation, four is jiggly, three is jiggly, two, wait, hold on, one is jiggly, two is jiggly, three is jiggly, or is jiggly and five. So everything's jiggly on the left. So let's go ahead after the right. We'll go to the other direction flag. Uh, pin one on the left. Uh, I don't know if it was binding a little bit. Now it's moving, moving freely. Two, jiggly, three, jiggly, four. Seems like it's binding, it's not moving. Push on four. All right, got some plug movement when I set four. Pin. Five is the other interactive. Seems to be a little bit of spring that I can feel there. Let's go back to the beginning again. Pin one, it's a uh, jiggle, two jiggle, three jiggle, back on four again. Hard to find. When it's, when it's high up, when the pin is already high up, it's a little bit hard to find. I'm gonna go back to the right again, now since everything on the left seems jiggly. One is jiggly. Two, feels like it's binding, I think, if I'm not touching the top. All right, I got a little click there, and a, a little bit of plug rotation when I, when I touch that. Let's see, pin one, no. Pin two, pin two still seems like it's binding though on the right here. All right, pushed it a little more. And now I think it's jiggling. Three, jiggling. Four, very little bit. 
and five is that weird interactive is fine. One, two, three. Let's check the left one more time. Before we go after the top, I want all these to be jiggly. One is fine, uh, jiggly, two jiggly, three jiggly, four is jiggly, and five. All right, so let's go after the top. Got this Jimmy Long's deep hook here. Uh, I can't really see into the keyway, which is, I like to be able to see the top pins when I'm working them, but I'll have to do it purely by feel, which may or may not be an issue. So the first one, I don't think I, I don't think there's too much risk of oversetting the top ones. So we can kind of just push on them as we go a little, with a little bit of force as we seek for the, I got a little click out of one of them on the top there. Don't know which one it was, doesn't really matter. You just want to get clicks. That was just me slipping off the pin. So I think that's, I think there's five up here. One, two, three, five, I think. I think I missed four. So I don't feel anything else given up there, but it could have been I set some of those. So we'll go ahead and check the side again. So pin one. No, two, three, four is high, so it's a little bit hard to find the fourth pin all the time. I think I might have got a little bit of play out of it. And the fifth pin, that interactive one. The fourth one keeps seeming to give a little bit of play, like it, it'll, it'll kind of grind up a little bit, like it's binding slightly like a taper. All right, second one on the right. Third one. Third one's hard to find. It seems like it's pretty high up. Maybe another max lift. Fourth one. All right, fifth interactive. Check it again. One. Yeah, this lock's a little older, so it does have some crunch, like a few areas that are kind of crunchy that it's hard to gauge the feedback from. I'm starting to lose the tension, it's starting to slip. Um, and I might have to reseat that tensioner. Three, I'll do it after this run maybe. Through. Yeah, the fourth one, it keeps like crunching its way up. But it doesn't seem to be binding. And the fifth one. So to what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll hold the tension with the pick like that. I can let go of the tensioner and reseat re it or try to reseat it like that. There we go. Go up to the top one more time. Got a weird pick hold here because I can't see. I have to use more feel. Mostly just me slipping around that you hear. I'm not actually feeling any clicks from anything. I'm just being quiet as I, I feel my way along the top. I don't seem to be feeling anything of interest. Oh, I'm losing my tension again. A lot of times when I go to the top, I'm pushing on the bottom tensioner and that'll cause me to lose my tension on the top. Uh, tensioner position it gets pushed down on and it loses how it's in there. It's kind of tenuous how it's in there. It's, uh, and I think it's starting to wear the keyway a little bit, even this with this little bit of tension, uh, this little bit of picking. So it's not staying in there right. Maybe not the most reliable tensioner method, but even when it slips, it's, I think it's still holding the, the tension fine. It's just eating up more of the keyway when it slips. So it gets a little bit harder to move your pick around. So I like to get it back down 
to the bottom. Alright, not feeling anything there. Let's try this right side. Pin one is jiggly. Pin two, jiggly. Three is hard to find, I think. I feel like this right side's all picked. It's got to be the left side and the top that's our issue. One, two, three. All right, we've got that click from that fourth one again. That fourth one keeps binding, but I don't know what it, what it's binding like. So that if it's taper, what's the other one that's got to be worked up, right? So you, taper basically, you you generally have to work two of them upward. But I don't know where my second one is. Might be one of the ones on the right. Just doesn't feel like it. Top. I'm even on the top pins very well. The tensioner is blocking a lot of the QA right now. I guess I didn't get it in a very good position when I reset it or repositioned it. Because I can't get to the back. So we'll go ahead and reposition it one more time. There we go. Let's see if that works. Okay. Yeah, I'm not really feeling anything on the top. It's kind of seems like blind luck on the top right now. Usually, like like I said, if I could see into the keyway, then I'd be looking for looking to make sure that my pick is going straight down the middle and touching the the pins up 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 top rather than like going to one side or the other but since I can't see a thing down the keyway I really don't know where it's at yeah, I'm not sure about this top pins or not huh all right ah oh, and the the, pick, the tensioner slipped again but I'll just live with it for now. I think I have enough room. First one. Oh, oh. I might have an overset. These feel really loose. Oh wait, no. I just touched the the fourth pin on the left and it gave me a bit of a turn on the plug, which is a good sign. Let's check the right. <laughs> It could be that that turn on the plug was all I needed to start checking the top, and because of where the tensioner is, I can barely get this right pick down. I feel the right hand side. Yeah, I think the right side's fine. I think it's now that I got a little bit plug turn off that left one. Maybe it's time for the top finally. If I don't get this picked in the next minute or two, I'm not gonna have enough time for a gut because it is. Uh, a little bit more of an involved gutting process for this guy. I'm not feeling anything up top. All right, this first pin. Oh, this one I can feel a little bit of plug movement. There we go. That first one I was feeling plug movement as I pushed. I was like, oh, I feel it. So, not the cleanest open, unfortunately, but it is an open. Um, and it was just mainly feeling around for the the binders and pushing on them. So, unfortunately, not a whole lot of knowledge to impart there but we'll go ahead and take a look inside so to get this open first we'll lock it up there we go so it's locked again locked unlocked so you could take this off and I was going to do that and then I start pushing back and um, 
there's this gap where this spring goes in and it, the um, the drivers don't clear it and there's not enough space it's really tight tolerance uh, not really enough space to fit uh, enough shims to allow that I can't even fit one shim actually so what we're going to do is we're going to take this pin out of here and to do that um, we'll just pound on it so this might get loud for a second and that one doesn't get it all the way out so I have this tensioner here Get set the rest of the way out so there's that pin Put that over here um, oh I wanted to take this off actually I don't know if I have the tools here to take that off I might have to run it off run upstairs after to grab some tools but you can see now this is loose um, because that pin kept that from turning and what you can do now is you can push this out and springs are going to start popping out so let's go ahead and slide this out with my finger over top of it got to have something to push my finger over top and catch all those springs oh, there's one trying to escape all right now we're out this is just a see it's just a round housing with a hole drilled here to hold the, the, the insides there okay so there we go so we did oh that, that springs so here's the left side so left side's going to go here here's number four with the driver attached three two and one number five spring is short in there like that so we'll see if we can get that five spring out there he is short little spring for whatever reason and that's the interactive spring um, up top got f five there four three two, three two and one and then the right side here Hopefully it won't drive, drop all kinds of drivers out of the left side. But there's number five, no spring, uh, no driver attached. Four has driver attached. Three. Two, no driver attached. And one. So some of them don't have the driver attached. We'll get that in a minute. Um, I'm probably going to have to get another tool. So what is that? Left side, number one. Left side, number one and two so that oh that's okay that first thing that fell out of the left side there that's not a that wasn't a driver pin that's this I'll show you this after this is one of these pins that go that I have to figure out um, all right so it's number two pin three on the left there we go a four doesn't want to come out five nope Nothing wants to come out. Go to the top. That was number four. This is kind of a bit of a mess. Um, I would like to take that off and then we could get a lot of these things out from the plug side, but I don't really have the tool right now to take it out. All right, there's driver number two on the right. What else is going to come out? Anything? Number one. Okay. So see the plug is turning and then the the pins aren't lining up to fall out. Let's try using the key to drive some stuff. Okay. Oh, a couple things came out. Um I think that's three on the right and four on the right. I'll have to double check with the key after I see number one come out. Give me some more. All right, there's number two came out, and another one of those weird, um, those weird pins. Put that there. That was on. This one was also. Looks like the other one wants to come out. We'll let it come out. So these are just pins that fill the driver chamber down here. I don't know their purpose. Um, like if if you can have more pins or not. Give me something up top. 
it was number five up top uh, number five on the right came out driver pin there's the key pin five is fully depopulated top number three top. number one top number two nope so we got I think all right, there comes driver pin number five on the left. Oh, such a messy gut. Trying to keep pin number five on the right. Uh, left, sorry. All right, two pins left. So for these, let's go ahead and bring out a pick. Bring out the big guns. Try to get the chamber lined up. Come on. Pushing on it there, I think. Oh, sorry. This is like a little bit of torture. I should have. If I can remove the C clip, then I can pull the plug out. That might be what I have to do. Um, I'm gonna have to grab. I'm gonna grab some tools. I'll be right back. I'll fast forward this bit. All right, back with a couple tools. So to take this rear clip off, what we'll do is we'll grab a screwdriver and we'll try to expand on the clip a little bit. Actually this side of it is wider. And once we expand on it enough, we'll grab this little C-clip remover. It's not wide enough yet. There. And we'll go in there like that. And we'll expand it like that. Hopefully that's enough. To get this off. There we go. Now we can get the plug out. You see number two is left and number four on the left. So number four on the left here. And number two on the top. All right, so the plug has nothing special. Um, there's just these ledges for everything to sit down in. It does have these four pins in here. They do come out um, not easily, but they do come out. So I'm thinking you could put either key control pins in there or you could put regular key pins in there. So it looks like a regular key pin like that All right so that's that bottom left one there and it has a corresponding chamber in the in the cylinder there where you could put another um, another pin right but on the key like what would that line up with um, it looks like you would you could maybe have some cuts right in the middle of the key here down the center Looks like it might line up with that. Uh, so I don't know if they have such a thing or not. Um, I'll be interested to, to hear. Let's look at what we got in here. This crazy lock. So um, you'll have things like this. You gotta be very careful. They have a, these key pins have a very thin lip on top. So you could easily, I could see easily oversetting that and then getting trapped on this side of it right you drop into a, a, like a false set there and yeah you don't think you'd recover from that um, these are designed to do that see so this 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 ledge here is to stop it from falling into the the keyway but then this ledge up here allows you to overset it and drop into what's actually a groove here there's a groove so that's absolutely designed to be overset <laughs> And then the key pins, a lot of them are like this, where they have that little key pin step. If I can hit. And so that will step down. So the plug will rotate a little, step down into that, that step down area, and you'll have to pick it a second time. But there are other drivers like this that are just standards, 
right? But they're short. Uh, but a lot of them are those those T-pin types. See, um, a lot of standards, and uh, and the rest are T-pin type. Um, I'm trying to get this one here. This is one of those T-pin type little step down. So step uh, one, two, two on the right side. One, one on the left side only. And then three on four on the top are like that you know, alarm. But in any case, that is the Bricard Chiffrol S2. And if you know anything about these bottom four side pins, let me know. Thanks, everyone. Bye.